students this is a lesson on the merchant of venice class 9 you are doing the original shakespeare play for the first time so this lesson is the introductory lesson we will begin with act 1 scene 1 of the main play now you have studied all genres of literature like right? the genres of literature means kinds of literature that you have studied you have studied poetry you have studied prose that is short story and that you are going to read now is play or drama now what is a play in a play the author does not say anything the author allows you to identify what is happening in the play all right you have to identify the development of events you will also have to identify the characters and their character trait so as you are reading the play as you are reading the dialogues of the characters you have to understand what kind of people they are what are they trying to convey and how the action of the play is going to move that is the uniqueness of a play theater or drama all right so you are reading original shakespeare now shakespearean language and shakespearean play so you have to decipher from the development of the play the development of action the plot the character now what do you have in the play what are the things that you have to look for in a play you have to look for the character the kind of characters that they are that is the first thing you also have to look for the development of plot what are the plots in the play usually you have main plot which involves the main action of the play you also have the sub plot okay the main plot and the sub plot so these are the two things you have to develop you have to find out from the play you also have to identify the kind of society the social picture you will get to know it as you are reading the play all right so as you are reading the play you try and look for all these things gradually as you move on so we begin with act 1 scene 1 there is a lot of introduction given to the play before the play began read that you have enough time now students at home so read the text that you have got your school text the introduction about william shakespeare there are a lot of interesting things about william shakespeare that we will discuss sometimes later first let us get into studies all right act 1 scene 1 the play is divided into five acts and each act is divided into scenes depending on the kinds of action and the location of the play now the setting of the play is important at the beginning of each scene now what we are doing today is act 1 scene 1 now you see at the beginning of the scene the location of the scene is given where is it located it is located in venice if you know about venice it's a beautiful city venice is filled with water bodies and you know people usually travel through those water bodies from one place to another from one house to another so it's a very beautiful city of course under covid circumstances at the beginning when this corona virus was taking uh, such a toll all over the world we have seen deserted scenario when is the gondolas have stopped and because the gondolas have stopped the machine gondolas the play we are reading the play uh, when uh, it took place years back then the gondolas were uh, you know uh, driven by human beings but the machine gondolas had done a lot of damage to the ecosystem but once the gondolas stopped the dolphins had come back to the water bodies so that we got to know in the news and uh, in the newspapers we have seen that so that is one interesting thing if you remember about venice that we have heard very recently but gondola is a very popular thing in venice these are boats small boats by means of which people travel from one place to another it's a very beautiful city venice so mainly the play is located in venice you know from the title of the play the merchant of venice now we have to look for who is the merchant of venice that's a very interesting thing it's not so obvious as it seems all right but the play begins with antonio salerno and salerno be very careful about the name students okay it's antonio we have salerno and we have salerno okay be very careful about the spellings 
You may lose marks unnecessarily if you make mistakes in spellings. The spellings are all there in the textbook. So when you are reading the text, keep your eyes open. Make it a habit to read the text with your eyes open so that this becomes a habit with you. To be very careful about the names. If you write the correct spelling, you get the full mark in literature. It's as easy. So be very careful about the spellings when you are reading. Don't read in a slipshod manner. Don't read casually. Okay, I know it is Antonio. It's not like that. It's Antonio. It's Salerino. It's Salerno. And read a little louder so the pronunciation is there in your mind. So there is no scope of making a mistake. So it begins with Antonio's speech. Go very slow, students. There is no hurry. And try and understand. Once you understand, you can pick up the momentum. Antonio starts with, in sooth. I know not why I am so sad. It wearies me. You say it wearies you. But how I caught it, found it, or came by it, what stuff it is made of, whereof it is born, I am to learn. And such a white wit sadness makes of me that I have much ado to know myself. He says, in sooth, sooth means truth. And make a habit of looking truly. This is in truth or truly. Make a habit of looking at the meanings given adjacent to the text. Okay, once you develop that habit, it will become very natural. When you don't understand a word, you just look at the meaning given adjacent to your text. Now, once you get into the meaning, you see gradually it will be easier for you to follow the language. The language is the problem here, otherwise it's very interesting to read a play, very easy to score, very easy to attempt questions. The problem only is language. So at the beginning, if you make it a habit to know and find out the meanings of each word, gradually it will be so fast for you. When you will be reading, you don't need to refer to the meanings also at times because by that time you are very confident about the meaning of the words. Like sooth is a new word for you but it was very common in those days. Truly I don't know why I am so sad, that's what he is saying. So he is with two of his friends, Antonio, and he is saying, he begins with the words, truly I don't know why I am so sad. You can understand it. You see, some line, some words are very simple. It varies me, varies. It makes me tired. So we understand, he's saying, I don't know why I am so sad. It makes me tired. You know, sometimes it happens with you. You just don't feel good about anything. Nothing feels good. But why are you sad? You cannot explain. What is it? Is it somebody has scolded you? No. You haven't got somebody? No. Your friends are not speaking to you? No. It's nothing like that. Friends are talking to you but still you are not interested to speak to them. You don't know the cause of your sadness. It just, it's a mood, you know. You, you just feel very sad. So Antonio says that. It varies me. It makes me tired. And you say it varies you. So he's telling his friends. You also say it is making you tired. Naturally, you see you are in a, you are in a group. You want to discuss something, you want to talk, you want to have fun. Suddenly one of your friends is very sad. He's not explaining why he's sad. Because if he explains, you can always come out with the solution. You don't give him suggestions. But when he doesn't know why he's see, so sad, he's just simply sitting there, grumpy faced. And he goes on telling, okay, you all continue no talking. I'm joining you. Okay, fine, I'm listening to you. But you don't enjoy, you know. You don't like, like it. So he's saying that, that you say it makes me tired, you say it makes you tired also, quite naturally. But he's saying, but how I caught it, how did I get this sadness? That means I don't know the source of this sadness. How I caught it means, caught it, source of sadness, you know. So he's saying, I don't know what is the source of this sadness. That means why I am sad, I cannot say. Okay. Found it. When did I realize that I am sad? Again, the source. Whereof it is born. How is it born? It's the same meaning, the source of it. Okay? I am to learn. I am myself trying to find it out. And such a one twit sadness makes of me. One twit. Look at that hyphenated word. Wit. Wit means wisdom, reasoning. Okay, this means reason, a reasoning power. Okay? And want means lack of it, lack of something. So want to it means I don't know the explanation. I don't have a reason why I'm sad. So want to it sadness. There is sadness that I can feel, but I don't know the reason of it. So it's something very dull, you know, blunt. 
and useless, it's foolish, it's stupid. I know I'm sad, but I don't know why I'm sad. He himself is getting a little irritated with it. So he's saying, such a one which sadness makes of me that I have much ado to know myself. I myself am having trouble to know it. I don't know, ado is trouble. There is a play by Shakespeare, much ado about nothing, much trouble about nothing. Ado is trouble. So I have much trouble to know myself. I'm trying to find it out myself why I'm so sad. So this is the first speech, the opening speech of Antonio. The play begins in such a note. Three friends together. The hopeful side about it, the optimistic side is the friends are there with him. So you see, you don't have friends with you, the world seems to be a blank place. But when your friends are with you, you can win the world. So his friends are there with him. So there's an optimistic side to it. But you look at the dullness that has overcome Antonio. But you see, even if he is dull, his friends are there with him. That's the positive thing. But Antonio is sad. Look at his mood. He's sad. Okay. And why he's sad, he doesn't know. That is the strangest part of it. So, you know, we get a picture of this man as a melancholic person. You know, he's a sad person. And he doesn't know why he's sad. He doesn't want to be sad. He doesn't want to make his friends sad. So he's a friendly kind of a person. Not that he draws attention like that. But at the same time, he's sad. So that is how the play begins. So you know, Antonio is sad. And Salerno, Salerno replies to it. He says, your mind is tossing in the ocean. He tries to give explanation to his sadness. He says, your mind is tossing in the ocean. Tossing means it's disturbed. It's being, uh, you know, pulled this side and that side. So your mind is in the ocean. And we wonder, why in the ocean? Why in the Antonio's mind in the ocean? He's giving the explanation. There, where your argosies with portly sail. Argosies, argosies are rich marching ships. Okay, argosies. Rich merchant ships. Remember this word, rich merchant ship. There is a significance to it. Why Shakespeare uses the word Argosies instead of simple ship. That tells us that Antonio is a rich merchant. So his merchant ships are also magnanimous in size. You know, huge ships. So his huge ships are in the ocean. You know, a businessman, what does he do? He invests money. First he puts the money, he buys the things. And then he waits for them to be sold. When they are sold, only when they are sold, Will he have the profit? Unless and until they are sold, he will not have the profit. Money is gone, but the goods are not sold. So you see, unless and until they are sold, the businessman is worried. In the same way, Antonio has invested money, brought large, huge ships, sailed his ships out with the goods in them. But unless and until the ships come back after the trade, with the return, with the price of those goods, he doesn't know whether his money's worth will return to him or not. So you see his argosies are there in the ocean. So now we know why Salerino is saying that your mind is in the ocean. Why? Because his argosies are in the ocean with portly sail. Sail, you know, in those days, they were not run by machine, the ships. They used to run by sail. So if the ship is huge, the sail will also have to be huge because a huge sail will help the wind to collect there and the ship will continue moving, okay? So portly sail, portly is, you know, costly, good-looking sail, stately sails, like seniors and rich burgers on the flood. Now you see the comparison there. There's a simile used. You have learned figures of speech in earlier classes. You have to apply them here in poetry and in play. Like, the word like, like means you are drawing a comparison, you know? It's a word to show comparison. When one thing is compared to other, you call it a simile. So here he uses a simile. The figure of speech here is simile. He uses a simile that your ships are just like rich, important gentlemen on the road. You know what we do? When we see important people passing by on the road, stately people, you know, they walk with fan following. So we know there is some, something important coming, so we move away a little. So it's like that. Antonio's ships are like that. Like rich seniors. Seniors in Italy, a gentleman is addressed as senior. Like Mr. You know, he's a gentleman. He's a respectable person. So your ships are like respectable persons on the sea. And rich burgers on the flood. Flood is ocean. The meaning of flood here is ocean or the sea. Okay. So your ships are like rich seniors and rich burgers on the flood. Or as it were, the pageants of the sea. There is another thing 
at which we wonder, you know, we look at. What is that? A show, you know, where there is a kind of a procession, people wearing masks, wearing colorful dresses. Like you see when this immersion procession goes during pujas, the immersion uh, procession with lights and colors and band. So that is like that. Okay, a pageant. Pageant is a show. Do overpeer the petty traffickers. Petty traffickers means ordinary boats. Okay, the petty traffickers. What are they doing? The petty traffickers are small boats. Antonio's ships are huge. Beside that, there are other merchant boats, but they are small. So what is the ships doing? When the ships are moving, as it is, you see, when a big ship will be moving, the flood water will push the little boats a little away, isn't it? So it is like that. So the small boats are moving away as if they are giving way to the important ship. Okay? Like petty traffickers that curtsy to them. You know, a huge ship beside that small boat and the tide is there. So you see the ship is moving like that, straight. And the small boats, you know, being carried by the flood, they will sit to bow down to the ship. So what are they doing? As if they are bowing down to your ship. So showing curtsy. Curtsy means politeness. They are allowing the important person to pass and they are bowing down, it seems. You see what a beautiful imagery is used. Not only a simile, there is also an imagery used here. You can almost visualize. You can almost see what is happening in the ocean. And why is Salerno doing it? Salerno is trying to boost up Antonio's confidence, you know, happiness. He's saying, look at your ships. You can't see them, but we can imagine when your ships are passing through the sea, such big, huge ships, and the small boats beside them, they are pushed aside by the waves. It seems as if the boats are bowing down to your ship, and they are allowing your ship to pass. Beautiful imagery, okay? Comparing the ships with rich gentlemen. That curtsy to them, do them reverence. Reverence means show them respect, showing your ships respect. Then here is the ship, remember, okay? As they fly by them with their woven wings. Another image is used. Woven wings. The ships don't have wings. But it seems as if the way the ships are passing, because it's a big ship, it has a bigger sail. Naturally, they are moving faster than the smaller boats. So as if they are flying past, though they are in the ocean, it seems they are flying past. They are moving very fast. So he's saying your mind is actually with your ships. Argosy is on the sea. That is why you are worried. You cannot understand, but we can understand that maybe you are actually worried about your ships because you have invested money. But look at the way your ships are going. You can, we can almost visualize your ships are moving past and the boats are buying, bowing down to them. So you see, they are so fond of Antonio. You know, they are trying to cheer up Antonio. They are not very sure how the ships are moving. But they can imagine and they try to cheer him up. Salerno. Salerno continues with what Salerno has said. says, believe me, sir, had I such venture forth, it's nothing surprising that you are worried. Salerno is saying, Believe me, sir, if I had such venture, venture here means investment, okay, and risk involved in it. So venture means something that you undertake without knowing what will be the consequence. So it is like a risk, you know, it's like a risk. If I had such investment as risk, risk of investment, so he has invested money. So he's saying, if I had such venture for, if I had such risk of investment, the better part of my affections, here affections means feelings, better part means most of my thoughts, most of my feelings would be with my hopes abroad. Abroad means which are away from me. Abroad always means away from me. Like abroad, I stay abroad means don't stay in the country I belong to, somewhere else far away. So my feelings, the better part of my feeling, majority of my feelings would have been with my hopes which are far away from me. That means my ships, my agassies. I should be still plucking the grass to know where sits the wind. So when you sing, nothing unusual that you are sad. I would have been more worried. I don't have the power and the strength and the courage that you have. So if I had such ships away from me on the ocean, I would have been plucking the grass. Why? Right? If you pick up a bunch of grass, and hold it in front of the wind, you can understand the direction of the wind, you know, the way the grass, grass will move. Why? Because grass is very light. So you hold the tuft of grass and the grass moves in the direction of the wind. So he's saying, I would have tried to find out every now and then in which direction the wind is moving. Why? Because the wind, if the wind is in the favorable direction, 
then the ship will reach the destination faster. So he would have tried to find out which direction the wind is moving. He means to say that I would have been more worried than you are and I would have been always thinking about the ships and the wind. So I would have been plucking grass with, to understand where sits the wind. Sits the wind means in which direction the wind is blowing. Peering in the maps for ports and fires and roads, you know, I would have been looking into the maps, the marine maps, to find out where are the harbors. How far will the ship take to reach? You know, in those days, communication system was not so advanced. So you can only make conjectures. You know, you can only guess that, well, this is the harbor. Maybe my ship is reaching here now. So he's saying, I would have looked into the maps to peer for ports, ports with harbors, fires, and roads. And every object that might make me fear, misfortune to my ventures, out of doubt would make me mad. And every little thing that would remind me that my ventures can be threatened. Like if there would have been a stronger wind, I would have thought, oh, maybe the winds are disturbing my ship and my ship may be drowned. If there would have been high tide, I would have been worried, can my ship overcome the high tide? If I would have heard anything has happened to any nation, I would have been worried, is my ship in that country now? So anything that would make me sad, would have, would, uh, anything that would have made me worried, would have made me sad. So it's nothing that you are sad. Because I would have also done the same thing if my ventures were like that. So you see what picture you get. Antonio is sad. And we also get a picture that Antonio has good friends who are trying to cheer him up. So this is the picture as the play opens. We know about these three characters. And you can understand Antonio is an important character because his rich ships are in the ocean. So no need for us uh, to try and make a conjecture who is the most important character here. Antonio. Because Antonio is a rich merchant. We have heard about rich Argosies who are moving in the ocean. Petty traffickers are bowing down. That means Antonio is a rich merchant. So Antonio is an important character. We also know Antonio is very popular. How? He has such good friends. So his friends are coming and trying to cheer him up. You understand? So this is the way the play is going to proceed. We will do only this much today. And you will read the play. These three speeches from Act 1 and Scene 1, try and understand if there is any doubt you have, you can always send a mail to the school, okay, with your phone number and we will try to reach you and answer your query. Is that clear? This is the first lesson that you are going to do. Now, what you do is, from the first uh, speech of Salerno, I'll give you a question, okay. First, take down the first speech of Salerno in your exercise books, Merchant of Venice. You make a separate exercise book for Merchant of Venice. From Salerno's speech, I'll just give you a few short questions. So this is Salerno's speech that you are going to do. Because your questions will be only reference to context. Okay, reference to context questions. So this from Salerno's speech. Salerno's speech, Act 1, Scene 1. Salerno speech, in this book it is line number 8 to line number 15, line number 14, sorry, to line number 14. I'll give you a few short questions to try and understand. This is your question. So, question number 1 will be, who is your referred to? Your referred to. What has happened to him? What has happened to him? You know he is sad and he doesn't know why he is sad. That is all the more cause of worry. Where are the speakers? Who else is with them? is with them. Question 3. Your Argosies dot dot whole sentence petty traffickers 
till this much, you explain the line in your own words. Explain in your own words. In your own words. Okay? Just this much you do as your exercise and very soon I'll come back to you with your second lesson for much of the Okay, students? Take care.